Welcome, friends, to the broadcast. I'm so glad that you tuned in today. You know, there's an old song that says, every promise of the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. And you know what made the promises of God ours? It was what Jesus did for us in his death and resurrection. And today, not only has the penalty for sin been paid, the power of sin been broken, but the promise of God has been secured. Open your heart and receive the word today. Friends, we're so glad that you joined us today for the program. I'm so glad that Aaron's here with me. We're sharing on redemption. We've been talking about that righteousness is the condition of the gospel, amen? But redemption is the result of the gospel. And when you believe the gospel, you have been redeemed. And redemption, when, when you study it in a sense of the gospel, it's a past tense thing. It's already been paid. The price has been paid for our freedom for our deliverance. Uh, we have been purchased uh, by Jesus. And we talked about in the first uh, program this week, we're redeemed from the curse of the law. We talked about a little bit about what that is. Um, we're redeemed from the curse of poverty, the curse of sickness, the curse of slavery, mm -hmm. slavery to sin, and the curse of uh, spiritual death. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus, when he comes again, will put that last enemy of physical death under our feet. Mm -hmm. And we also talked about how we're, uh, the price for redemption has already been paid. Mm -hmm. The penalty has already been paid. It was the price of the blood. Mm -hmm. Jesus paid the, the most expensive price in the universe. God mm -hmm. paid for us mm -hmm. with the blood of his own son, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus paid for our redemption, mm -hmm. praise God. And we said, the power of sin has been broken. Mm -hmm. Now, we haven't looked at this verse this week, but let's look into Colossians chapter one. Colossians chapter one says this um, in verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father who made us meet, made us sufficient, qualified us. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're- Yeah, qualified us. Yeah. Qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. We're qualified mm -hmm. for God's best blessing. Isn't that marvelous? Mm -hmm. He says, who has past tense delivered us from the power, from the dominion, from the authority of darkness mm -hmm. and translated us. Mm -hmm. Man, translated is like, boom, mm -hmm. you left one, came into the other. Mm -hmm into the kingdom of his dear son, the sons of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Mm -hmm. Thank God, even the forgiveness of sin. Mm -hmm. So forgiveness is part of redemption. Mm -hmm. So our forgiveness is already paid for. Mm -hmm. In fact, my forgiveness was paid for nearly 2,000 years before I ever arrived here on the earth. Mm -hmm. That's marvelous thinking. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to realize that, that your sins of our, you know, in a lot of our old legalistic churches, there's more of a focus on sin than there is on Jesus and redemption and on mm -hmm. what he's done. And, and when, when you do that, people focus on their sin and they're begging God to forgive them. They're begging God for the promises. And we are not, be you never begged me when you were a child for, for bread, mm -mm. <laughs> did you? No. Never begged for a meal. Mm -hmm. Never begged even if you drank one of my Cokes out of the refrigerator. Mm -mm. Sometimes you just took them. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm a son. You're a son. You're in the family. Mm -hmm. Praise God. We're not beggars. We're children. We're mm -hmm. sons of God. We've been translated into the kingdom of the sons of his love. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I love you. But even more than I love you, God loves us. Mm -hmm. And when we understand that we've come into his kingdom, it changes. And we have already been purchased. Praise God, we have been redeemed. We have been bought. We have been freed. We have been liberated. Mm -hmm. What marvelous news. Through his blood, glory to God, we have been forgiven. Mm -hmm. We've been pardoned for every sin as if it was never committed. Mm -hmm. No more record of it. Mm -hmm. Can't even find it. Mm -hmm. Who was that you're talking about, Mr. Devil? Mm -hmm. <laughs> glory to God, no record. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, my blood paid the price. Mm -hmm. Boy, when you understand that it, changes the way you live your life. Mm -hmm. What a marvelous gospel. 
that we have been that we have received. So uh, we've talked about this. Um, the penalty for sin has been paid. The power of sin has been broken. Sin no longer has dominion over us because we're not under the law, but under grace. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 56 says the law is the strength of sin. Mm. The law actually made sin stronger, but mm. Jesus broke the power of sin. And now we're no longer under the law, mm -hmm. but we've come to live in the light of the gospel, mm -hmm. in the light of, of what Jesus has done. When you live that way, it changes your life. Mm -hmm. Praise God. We talked about this briefly yesterday. We said, you know, there's a saying, sin will take you farther than you want to go, cost you more than you want to pay, keep you there longer than you want to stay. Mm -hmm. And when you read Romans 5, you find out that we left the reign of sin and death and we came into the reign of grace and righteousness. Mm -hmm. and, and the way that we live is different because of that. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 6 says we no longer let sin have dominion. Over. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Why? Because we're dead to it. We're free from it. We have authority over it. Mm -hmm. We talked about that. Sin will not have a dominion over you because you're not under the law but under grace, but it'll kill you. Mm -hmm. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. But not only does Romans 6 say this, Romans 6 says that we don't let sin lord over us. We don't live in that domain anymore. But Romans says, 7 says just like we're free from sin, we're free from the law. Mm -hmm. And just like sin will kill you, legalism will kill you. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to get legalistic. And most of us get legalistic about something. Mm -hmm. But when you get legalistic, legalism, do you know what? It'll cost you more than you want to pay. Mm -hmm. It'll take you places you don't want to go. Mm -hmm. Praise God. It'll keep you there longer than you want to stay. Mm -hmm. So in Romans 7, uh, Paul actually says this. He says that we're delivered from the law. Uh, in Romans chapter 7, I have to read. It's in the first four or five verses there. And so we're free from the law. We're not only free from sin in Romans 6, but we're to live free from the law. And he says we're dead to the law in verse 4. Uh, but he says this, uh, the motions of sin which were by the law, the law made sin stronger in verse 5, worked in our, in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now he says in verse 6, we're delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held, we should serve... Uh, in newness of spirit, not only in the oldness of the letter. So mm -hmm. we've been set free from the law. Mm. Praise God. That's and awesome. So uh, praise God, we've been free. Jesus has freed us. And, and we need to realize that. And when you realize that, you come into this life of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And Romans chapter 8 begins to go into this. And it says, there is therefore now no condemnation, no judgment against those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm. For the law of the spirit of life has made me free from the old law of sin and death. Mm. You know, I had a good friend and, and you know, he, he went through a very challenging, very hard time in his life. And, and uh, he called me, you know, he actually pushed me away for a while because of this challenge that he was going through. And then he called me and, and I said, listen, I'm not your judge. Mm -hmm. God is your judge, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm not condemning you. That's not my job. Mm -hmm. And the Bible actually says there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We gotta let the spirit rule, mm -hmm. praise God. And he says, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus set me free from the old life, law of sin and death. So the uh, pe penalty for sin has been uh, paid, but the power of sin has been broken. And when you understand that, we've been delivered out of that old lifestyle. We've come into this new life in Christ. Mm -hmm. We've been forgiven for every sin. Mm -hmm. Praise God. We've been redeemed from every curse. We've talked about that a little bit. Now, the next thing we find, if we go back over here to Hebrews, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 9, where we've been looking at a few of these scriptures for the last few days. But he says here in Hebrews chapter 9, talking about how the price for sin has been paid and the power of mm -hmm. sin has been broken. He says this in verse 13 and 14. He says in verse 12, talking about the, the you know, the, by the blood of coats and calves, this Old Testament sacrifice, but by his own blood, Jesus entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So we talked about how the the penalty for sin has been paid mm -hmm. and, and the power of sin has been broken. He says, for if the blood of goats and, and bulls and ashes of a heifer mm -hmm. sprinkling the unclean, it's dealing with that old, 
you know, the flesh sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I actually see it as the mercy of God that God said, hey, if you do this sin, then you go make the sacrifice because it kind of helped deal with their consciousness, right? And that guilt, mm -hmm. but it was still there. Mm -hmm. But he says, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. This is Hebrews 9 verse 14. Purge your consciousness from dead works. Mm -hmm. Now, what is dead works? It's all those performance things that we did under the old law. And he says to make you serve the living God. So not only has the penalty for sin been paid, but the power of sin has been broken. Mm -hmm. And that brings us where we can live in this new life, where the promise has been secured. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start reading. Aaron, why don't you read uh, verse 15 uh, through verse 18. So it says, And for this reason he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. For where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all where the testator lives. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. Okay, so Jesus actually had to die to enact the will of God, mm -hmm. the testament, the last will and testament mm -hmm. of God. But then he rose again to carry it out. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jesus died to enact it. Mm -hmm. You know, a will doesn't have any power until somebody dies. In fact, I was taken out of a will in my family mm -hmm. because they decide they want to give stuff to somebody else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they can do that. It's their power, mm -hmm. right? They had me go to a meeting with the attorney from my church, which was sad. And uh, all some other family members, they said, listen, we're going to take you out of the will. We're going to put them in the will. We're going to give them what we should. They said, what do you think about that? I said, doesn't matter what I think. It's not my will. Mm -hmm. It's your will. Mm -hmm. It's your stuff. Mm -hmm. Do with it what you want to. And they ultimately did that because I made a decision not to run a ranch, but to, you know, preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. But God's been really good to me. And, you know, Jesus said, if you give up anything for the gospel, Mm -hmm. And for my sake, I'll give you uh, not, he said, I'll give you um, not only eternal life in the life to come, but I'll, I'll give you a hundredfold in this life. Mm -hmm. I've not quite got there, but I believe we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. And good things are going. God's been really good to me. Mm -hmm. I believe those promises. And so, uh, but he begins to talk about uh, by this promise, we receive an eternal inheritance. Mm -hmm. If you receive an inheritance, you didn't work for it. Mm -hmm. I like uh, earlier we were talking about how God has qualified us to be partakers of that inheritance. Amen. You know, and really we're co-heirs with Jesus. Jesus also received received an inheritance from the Father, and we're co-heirs with Him, and, and we're actually made, we're qualified yeah, to equal, be saints. That word co-heirs means equal heirs together. Mm -hmm. That's pretty hard for the natural mind mm -hmm. to conceive mm -hmm. that we are equal heirs together with Christ. Mm -hmm. Whatever is his is ours. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the power of this new covenant. Mm -hmm. And so, man, what a marvelous gospel we received. The penalty of sin's been paid. Mm -hmm. The power of sin has been broken, but now we're talking about the promise has been secured. Mm -hmm. And we're not trying to get it. It's already been given to mm -hmm. us. And we need to just understand that, begin to live in the light of it. We're going to take a short break. We're going to be back and we're going to be sharing more about how the promise is secured. And you don't want to miss the last half of this broadcast. It is good news, great news for us who have received the gospel. Bless you. Friends, I'm so glad you've been watching. Today we've been teaching on the subject of redemption and who we are in Christ. This is some of my best teaching. In fact, I got a revelation of this over 40 years ago in Andrew Womack's meetings uh, when I was just a child and it revolutionized my life. And I believe if you get a revelation of who you are in Christ and what happened in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, it will literally transform your life. And so we have a lot of great teaching on redemption, what Jesus did for us in his death, burial, and resurrection, and who we are in Christ. I encourage you to get this teaching. I believe just like it transformed my life, it will transform your life. So get on the internet, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much 
and God bless you richly as you allow his word first place. Friends, I'm so glad that you stayed tuned with us. We're right back here in Hebrews chapter nine. We're gonna move forward. Uh, we've been talking about how the penalty of sin's been paid, the power of sin's been broken, but now the promise has been secured. Mm. So we we talked about in verse 15, uh, you know, those who were called might receive the promise of an eternal inheritance. Mm -hmm. So we receive an inheritance in Christ, far better than any natural inheritance, really, mm -hmm. when you think about it. And he talks about how Jesus secured this by his blood. He had to die to enact the last will, test, will and testament of God, but he rose again to carry it out. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at verse 19, he begins to go back into the Old Testament, but we're gonna read a number of these verses in verse 19, he says, but when Moses had spoken, Hebrews 9, verse 19, every precept to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled the book in the people. Mm. So see, Moses is speaking. He's given people the law, right? Mm -hmm. And the law said, if you do good, I'll bless you. But if you don't, you'll be cursed. Mm -hmm. The children of Israel thought it was going to be a blessing, but it ended up being a curse because they couldn't keep it. Mm -hmm. That's why they had to be born again. Mm -hmm. But Moses, after he read these promises of this old covenant, he takes the blood of these different animals and he sprinkles the book mm -hmm. and then he sprinkles the people. Mm -hmm. Now listen to what he says. He said when he did that, this blood of the testament, this blood of the covenant, which God has enjoined to you. Mm -hmm. So it's not me making a covenant. It's mm -hmm. God's covenant. Mm -hmm. And God's covenant's better than a man's covenant. Mm -hmm. God's promise is better than a man's promise. God's word's better than a man's word. Mm -hmm. God's inheritance is better than a man's inheritance. Mm -hmm. You know, when I got taken out of this natural will, I was in a bad time in the cattle business and, and I had a bunch of cattle and we were pastoring the church and the banker was wanting actually to call my note. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and at the same time, he was talking to me about calling my note. He's asking if he could get this other family member's business who inherited all the stuff that was taken from other members of the family and given to him. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's end up that they can hardly keep anything. And, and you know, your mother and I have grown wealthy in a natural sense. Mm -hmm. because the blessing of God, it's the blessing of the Lord that makes us rich. Mm -hmm. It's the blessing of the Lord that helps us. And so he, he, he dedicated this and he sprinkled the book in all the people. And he said, this is the blood of the covenant, which God has enjoined to mm -hmm. you. So God enjoined the promises of his covenant to us mm -hmm. with the blood. Mm -hmm. Now he's talking about in the Old Testament, Moses, but it's a type of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. It's a type of the blood of Christ. And he says, moreover, he sprinkled both the, the tabernacle, right? Now, the tabernacle today is the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And he's talking, we have a better tabernacle and we have a better sacrifice, the blood of Christ. He sprinkled both the, uh, uh, he says, the tabernacle and all the vessels of ministry. Mm -hmm. Who are vessels of ministry in a New Testament sense? Uh, believers are. Believers are. Mm -hmm. Every believer is a minister. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise God. As every man has received the gift, so let it minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. That's 1 Peter 4, verse 10. So he sprinkled the, the tabernacle, the body of Christ, and, and the believers, we could say. And, and now this is in the Old Testament. So he sprinkled the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry there. And he says, almost all things are by the sacrifice. So, you know, I love what Andrew Womack said years ago. He said, you know, there's, God's never really had anybody qualified working for him yet. Mm -hmm. But what qualified us? The blood of Jesus. The blood of us. Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we're qualified for God's best blessings. We're qualified for the promises. Mm -hmm. We're qualified to minister. And what qualified? The blood. Mm -hmm. It's not by our own performance. Mm -hmm. Now, Listen, I pray and read, read my Bible, but I'm not qualified because I pray and my, read my Bible. I'm qualified. Now, I want to study to show myself approved to God. Mm -hmm. Right? A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly defining the word of uh, uh, truth, like it says in 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. But that's not qual what qualifies me for ministry. It's the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's the gifting of God. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And, I, and I, I want to be a good steward of what God's given me. Mm -hmm. but, but he says this. 
He sprinkled the blood, the tabernacle, and the vessels of ministry, and almost all things by the law are purged without the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Mm -hmm. I love this word remission. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about redemption and remission of sin. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness of sins, you're pardoned for it, but remission means this. It's aphesis, the Greek word. Forgiveness, deliverance, liberty, remission, to pardon as if never committed. Mm -hmm. Glory to God, like it's gone. Mm -hmm. All my sins, we sing that song, Aaron, you could probably tell me what it is, are dead and gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's the gospel. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. I love that. Pardon. I, I heard a joke several years ago that um, Donald Trump actually made. It was right after he had been elected president and he was at a, you know, a political banquet and, and Hillary Clinton was actually at it. And he said, oh, I bumped into Hillary and she said, pardon me. <laughs> uh, he kept saying she should be thrown in jail, you know, when they were. She should be thrown in prison. She's probably, a criminal. But uh, I thought that was kind of a, God funny, bless you. a funny joke. You know, <laughs> someone has to have authority to give a pardon. Yes. You know, and uh, God has the highest authority to and pardon. He's someone. pardoned us. And if he says you're pardoned, that, that means no one can throw the book at you, no one can lock you up and. No, you're, you did you know what? You were sinned. You're... You already went to pay the price, but somebody <clears throat> came and freed you from that. To mm -hmm. pardon as if it was never committed. Mm -hmm. In fact, they, they talk about this having the record expunged. Mm -hmm. And it costs a lot of money in the natural, a lot of attorneys, different things to get a record expunged. Mm -hmm. But if, if it's expunged, there is no more record of the wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. You can't find it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And it's like this, if you could just think about this. Say that we're in heaven's court, right? Mm -hmm. And say that that I am the accuser of the brethren, and you are the accused, or you, you are the accused, right? Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus, okay, you'd be sitting over there, Jesus would be sitting here, right? And Jesus would be your attorney, mm -hmm. and God the Father's on the throne. We're gonna let you guys watching today be the be God the Father. Mm -hmm. And so the devil, I'm the accuser of the brethren, and I say, Aaron did this, and he did that, and he did something else. He stole my Coke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, whatever I could get against. Now, Aaron, there's not much I could get against you, but you live a very good life, a very godly life. But there's some few things you've done wrong. But but I'd be making all these excuses. And, and God the Father sitting on the throne, he says, what do you have to say about that? And, and Jesus stands up in your place. Mm -hmm. and, and he says, my blood paid the price. Mm -hmm. And the Father says, there is no record. Mm -hmm. There is no record. Mm -hmm. So the devil goes off shaking his head. Ah! He's going crazy because the blood of Jesus, the record's been expunged. There is no more record of wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. Praise God. It's not, it's been pardoned as if never committed mm -hmm. and it's been expunged. The blood mm -hmm. of Jesus, it's been remitted. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We, we've been freed. We've been forgiven. We've been delivered. Mm -hmm. it, it no longer has power over us. Glory mm -hmm. to God. And so we've been talking about praise God. The blood paid the penalty for our sin. The blood broke the power of sin. But here the blood secured the promise. All the promises of God we say are yes and amen in him. And so thank God, for, he says the remission of sin. He, he goes on and says this in verse 23, it was necessary that the patterns of things in heaven should be purified with these. This was just a type. This, these sacrifices, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these, talking about the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He says, for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with the hands, not this physical tabernacle on the earth, which are a, a type or figures of the true tabernacle that's in heaven, but into heaven himself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Mm -hmm. Jesus appears in God's presence. Mm -hmm. Marvelous. Mm -hmm. He stands up. I just see Jesus. Man, the devil is making all these rat, ratty accusations, bringing up every, you know, off-colored thing that anybody ever did, even if there's not much. Mm -hmm. And Jesus stands up and says, my blood paid the price. The Father says, there's no record. Mm -hmm. There's no record. Forgive him. That's awesome. Pardon. You know, uh, a couple of years ago, I, I hired someone to, to research the Purdue ancestral <laughs> line. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting what... Um, the, these um, people can find through through public record, and uh, you know they, they have a uh, the Purdue public records going back 14 years. You know different divorce settlements, 14 generations, wills. But even um, you know the the Purdues um, came from France to England and then to Virginia, and um, you know there there was a a Purdue Malachi Purdue fought in the Revolutionary War, but they settled in 
Virginia, but um, there there was a Purdue that fought in the the Civil War on the Confederate side, and there's a record of of a presidential pardon for that Purdue who fought. Oh wow! On the wrong side. So really, like if you fought on the Confederate side, you were you were uh, <laughs> in, you were an insurrectionist. You were you were committing tre high treason. They could have they could have killed you by law, but but uh, I think it was President Johnson that signed with his signature that this this. Purdue was pardoned from from the crime of of, of treason yeah. for fighting on, on the Confederate side, and um, they they wow. did that with all the you know Abraham Lincoln believed that they should pursue forgiveness rather than right. Uh, He's a very godly man, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's a very different um, type of attitude. Um, Today, you know what we have people that are, that are in political prison here in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's a tragedy mm -hmm. for doing things that you know that just being stupid. Mm -hmm. But they really were not trying to overthrow the government. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this stuff and, and the media, the liberal media has tried to play this out, make something of it that it isn't. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really a tragedy. It's yeah. really a shame. It's, it's a shame to democracy. Mm -hmm. It's a shame to our union and to our nation, mm -hmm. some of the things that these liberals have done. Mm -hmm. And thank, hope, hope to God we get a turnaround mm -hmm. in this way this nation is going. Mm -hmm. And uh, praise God. And so thank God we've been forgiven. Mm. Amen. There's no more remembrance of our sin. We've been yeah, pardoned. Think about the power of a presidential pardon. Think about the power of God's pardon. Oh, that's an eternal, mm -hmm. eternal. You said eternal redemption. Mm -hmm. And you said some people were complaining, little kids, about being at practice for five nights in the Christmas program, mm -hmm. Christmas Eve program. But you said that's better than five nights in hell. Lord mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. think about eternity in hell. Mm -hmm. And Jesus broke hell's power over us Amen. and made us citizens of heaven. Amen. I'm a citizen of heaven on loan to the earth from God. Think about that. Praise God. God bless you. We love you. Give us a call if you need prayer. We'd love to hear from you. Blessings. You have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. The power of sin is broken and you are no longer a sinner, but a saint. Get the redemption package, which includes redemption and in Christ realities on either CD or digital download for $37 when you call 719-418-4000 or visit karischristiancenter.com. Friends, I certainly hope that you've enjoyed the program today and it's ministering to you to move into that which God has for you. And I wanna say a great big thank you to all of our partners for helping us share this gospel across the United States and across the world. It's because of our partners that we can take this message of grace and faith around the world. If you would like to join our partners and receive that blessing, give us a call today. Blessings. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at PO Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.